Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. And by popular demand, because it's still available, you told me and asked me to cover it. And who am I to say no? The Kubelik box, the big DG, the complete recordings on Deutsche Grammophone. And so here it is. I mean, it's the Kubelik box. Look, I mean, it's still around. Can you believe it? I, 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 I'm stunned. And there's some marvelous stuff in here. I mean, some of which we know what it is and we'll be known about it for a long time, but oh, what the hell. Let's go through it. Let's show if I can get it. Of course, I have to get it open and it doesn't seem to want to open. How does it open? Oh, I see. Ah, wait a minute. I glued this back on after I got it and it seems to be stuck. So <laughs> maybe we won't be going through the Kubelik box. No, I mean, you know, I didn't want to lose it. And I, it had one of these, oh, here we go. One of these gummy sticky things. There it is. Now it's fine. You know, they had, it's like this, like goop here that like, oh, was always sticky. All right. Life is so complicated. All right, Raphael Kubelik, a wonderful conductor. We all love him dearly. And we are going to go through this entire sucker. All right, here we are, contents, track listings, CD track listings. It's easier to do it that way. These are not, by the way, um, original. Well, they are original jackets. Look at that. They're original jackets. That's actually rather cool. That's Cherepman Piano Concertos. All right, now, do they have all the operas that he did too? Yeah, of course they do. I only listened to this when it first came out like 50 years ago. Let's start at the beginning. CD1, Bartok, Concerto for Orchestra, Boston Symphony Orchestra, reference recording. I mean, that's a great way to start. It, 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 it's, it's an incredibly fabulous performance of the Bartok. It really is. It's wonderful. And it's coupled with the Cherepnin Second Piano Concerto with Cherepnin, 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 Cherepnin himself playing the piano. So that's really cool. And Piano Concerto Number 5 with Cherepnin himself. These are lovely works. They're fun. They're entertaining. They're zippy and enjoyable. And... And, oh, it's just delicious. What a delightful disc that is. I'm sold already on the whole box. Okay, then we've got the Beethoven cycle. Now, the thing about the Beethoven cycle is that each symphony is done with a different orchestra that Kubelik had a relationship with. And that's really a cool concept. And it's a very good Beethoven cycle. It really is. I mean, some of the performances, a couple may be a little droopy here and there, but they're quite lovely. They were reviewed at classicstoday.com. So you can just whiz on over there and have a look and see what we had to say about them. But the orchestras, for the record, um, are, in or numerical order, the London Symphony, the Berlin Phil, uh, not numerical order, but it doesn't matter, the Berlin Phil, the Concertkabal, uh, Bavarian Radio, the Israel Phil, the Boston Symphony, the Orchestra de Paris doing the Pastoral Symphony. I always like that performance. Uh, the Vienna Phil. Didn't we already do the Vienna Phil? Did we already, no, it was the Berlin Phil, pardon me. The Vienna Phil, the, the Cleveland Orchestra, and Bavarian Radio. Okay, so they got two. But otherwise, it's like really rather nifty to have all these different orchestras making up a Beethoven cycle. It was a clever concept. Needless to say, it was deleted and nobody's much mentioned it since. But Kublik was such a sympathetic conductor, and so these are fun to listen to. Uh, the Berg Violin Concerto with Heinrich Schering. And the Jean Martinon Violin Concerto Number no. 2. Whoa! With Heinrich Schering. Dvorak, Complete Symphonies with Berlin Phil. It's one of the great Dvorak cycles. It always has been. The best performances probably are 4, 6, 8, and 9. Maybe 3, 4, 6, 8, and 9. You know, Kubelik you know, didn't want to do the first at all. Um, and, and, you know, he uses the cut version. Uh, but it, it's it's the playing is quite wonderful, and they're wonderful performances. They really are, and they're famous, and everyone knows them and loves them, and so that's fine. Then we've got the rest of his Dvorak, which is fantastic. You've got all these overtures: My Home, Hositka, the Hussite Overture, In Nature's Realm, Carnival, and Othello. And then you've got the symphonic poems, the Water Goblin, the Noon Witch, the Golden Spinning Wheel, and the Wild Dove, or the Wood Dove, whatever you want to call it. Oh, they're gorgeous. The only weird thing is that in the Wood Dove, he uses a snare drum instead of a tambourine. I don't know why. It's clear what Dvorak wanted. 
and then these symphonic variations. All of these are splendid reference recordings. They've been around for ages. Same thing with the Slavonic dances, exciting as hell, fresh and vibrant. And then the Dvorak Stabat Mater, which is absolutely marvelous. Uh, one of the great recordings of that. And he does the Legends, which are fantastic with the English Chamber Orchestra. The Serenade for Strings, which is coupled with, with Kubelik's own Quattro Forme per Archi, for four shapes for strings, which is interesting to hear. So, you know, I, I love all the unusual repertoire, but boy, his Dvorak is, is you know, de rigueur, as we say in the biz. <clears throat> Faya, Knights in the Gardens of Spain, Martin V Concerto with Magritte Weber. Fantastic. Magritte Weber's husband was really rich, so she got lots of uh, gigs um, because he paid for them. But the truth is, she was an excellent pianist, and I love this Knights in the Gardens of Spain. And the Martin V Concerto, it's sui generis. At this time, there was no other way to get the piece. It's a wonderful, wonderful work. It's subtitled Fantasia Concertante, and it's just great. What's well, not to love? It's a wonderful coupling, actually, but the fire is a huge surprise. It's really fiery and exciting and beautiful. Handle water music and fireworks music with the Berlin Phil. Well, those are big band, stylish handle performances. Carl Amadeus Hartmann, Symphonies 4, which is for string orchestra, and 8 for full orchestra. Sonics are not the best, maybe, but the performances are, uh, well, the orchestra sounds a little stressed now and again. It's okay. Uh, Stravinsky, Scherzo alla Russe, and Circus Polka. That's all on CD 23. Then we've got Haydn. Yay! Mass in the Time of War, the Palkin Mesa, um, which is lots of fun. And then Handel, let's see, Circe. Is that all of it? No, Bits of Circe with Fritz Wunderlich. That's right, he's singing Circe, which is a countertenor, which is a countertenor role, of course. But in this case, we have a real tenor, and he's also doing some Gluck arias from Iphigenia auf Tauris with Hermann Pry, which is fine. Then, ah, uh, the Janicek stuff. Also, de rigueur. Because it's Janicek with, um, with what's his name? Yes, with Rudolf Firkuzhny doing the concertino, the capriccio. And then you've got the Sinfonietta and Taras Bulba, which are fantastic performances. Wonderfully recorded. But the mass trumpets of the Sinfonietta are as well caught as you will ever hear them done. The Glagolitic Mass with Evelyn Lear singing and Ernst Hefliger and Franz Grass and Hilda Russel Maidan. Really wonderful stuff. The Diary of One Who Vanished um, with Raphael Kublik playing the piano with Ernst Hefliger tenor in German of Deutsch. Here it is. Tagbuch, see, Tagbuch eines, uh, eines Verscholen, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, there. See? There you go. Wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, Mahler, up the Mahler cycle, along with the Songs of a Wayfair with Fischer Dieskau. Now, Kubelik's Mahler was Czech Mahler light, sort of, kind of. He, the orchestra and Kubelik himself were, were not really capable of capturing the bigness of some of these works. Like the second and the eighth, they're not very exciting. However, however, numbers one, three, four, uh, let's see what else, five, is five okay? Yeah, five is very good, six, a little bit lightweight, seven, very quick, um, and you know, it's very interesting when Kublik redid it with the New York Philly, it took like 20 minutes longer, it's unbelievable, um, and the nine is rather good of its type. You hear lots of woodwinds, it's very, it's very friendly and nice sounding, it may be a little bit you know, lacking in Sturm und Drang. And like I said, the second and the eighth, they just need to be bigger. They need to be more. They need to be more emotionally generous and conceptually on a grander scale. But it's all of a type. And at, at the time, this was one of the, you know, pioneering Mahler cycles. There was Kubelik, there was Heitink, there was Bernstein. Schulte was working his way through it. That's what we had. And a Bravanel, of course, you know, which is similar, quite similar to Kubelik conceptually in many respects. So, you know, I, they've, been, they've been surpassed, some of them, but number one is still a reference recording, and, and the others, well, you know, it's nice to have, I guess. Uh, let's see, so Mahler, we're going to get through this, and of course you get the Adagio for the 10th also. Let's not forget that. Uh, Symphony number nine. Okay, Mendelssohn. 
Rehearsal of the Overture to a Midsummer Night's Dream. Gut, die Akkorde. So, spielen wir es jetzt noch einmal. Let's do it again, he says. So, kommen Sie einmal zu E. Take it at letter E. And das wollte ich. Aha, here is das. Mm, there it is. Okay, then you get the Midsummer Night's Dream music with Edith Mathis and Ursula Böse alto, and it's really, really good. It's a live recording. Oh, okay. That's what they say. Mozart, the Hofner Serenade, the Coronation Mass, the Missa Brevis in C major, and Ave Verum Corpus, and the Clarinet Concerto, and the Weber Clarinet Concerto with Carl Leister in Berlin. Um, I find Kubelik's Mozart to be forgettable. It's not terrible. It's just not thrilling. And these works, of course, have been played to death, and I think better. That's my view of it. Disagree with me if you dare. And then we've got, let's see, oh, Carl Orff's Oedipus the Tyrant. <laughs> yeah, if you really want to, if you're a glutton for punishment. That's fun. Let's see, Oedipus, lots of Oedipus. Oedipus, yeah, Carl Orff stuff, fine. Fitzner's Palestrina, which my excellent opera critic friend Bob Levine describes as Parsifal without the laughs. Yeah. Um, still the best recording of this sort of albatross of an opera. Uh, and Kubelik did a lot of interesting opera stuff, too, because he was with Bavarian Radio. They could do a lot of contemporary music. It's not what DG chose to record. But if you follow him on Orfeo and his other labels, you see there's like all kinds of cool stuff. Um, he also did Hindemith's Mathister Mahler for EMI, don't forget. So here is Palestrina. Yes, well, that's like, you know, nice to have. Um, I actually kind of like the piece. The Gura Leader. Now, this girl leader is it's with Herbert Schnacht Schneider, Schacht Schneider, as Waldemar, Inga Bork, Inga Bork, you know, the, the Electra and Salome on that Reiner recording, Hertha Topper, Hertha Topper, and other people. Again, small scale, quick, um, not terribly grand or enticing, and recorded in a rather tight studio ambience. Schoenberg, Piano Concerto with Alfred Brendel and Violin Concerto with Sweet Zeitlin. Kind of a classic for music of the Second Viennese School. I think the Violin Concerto has been done better since, you know, Robert Kraft recorded it really fabulously well. Um, and, and, but this was Brendel's first recording of the Piano Concerto. He did it twice and they were important performances when they were released. Schumann Symphonies with the Berlin Phil along with the Overture to Genevieve and the Overture to Manfred. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this Schumann. I think it's also kind of a little plain Jane, a little ordinary. There's so much great Schumann out there. But a lot of you have said that you love these performances. And I, I you know, I take you at your word. I'm not going to, to dismiss them out of hand because there's nothing ostensibly wrong. I just find other Schumann cycles more persuasive. So, you know, as you wish. Then the Schumann Piano Concerto and the Greek Piano Concertos with Geza Anda. Those are nice. And the Schumann Piano Concerto again, and the introduction on Allegro Appassionato with Wilhelm Kempf. Well, you get to compare them, and that's kind of fun. Then, oh, Ma Vlast with the Boston Symphony Orchestra. This is CD 53. It's a reference recording. It's a classic. It's fabulous. It's gorgeous. It's wonderful. Uh, CD 4. Let's see. Oh, Smetna Tone Poems. Yeah, Richard III, Wallenstein's Camp, Hakon Jarl, and Prague Carnival, which is bizarre. Such a bizarre piece. Um, it's something that, you know, he wrote like after he went insane and it kind of sounds like it. But the other stuff is marvelous. Verdi's Rigoletto. I love this Rigoletto. I mean, some of you said you hated it because it's not Italianate. And it isn't. But it's with Carlo Bergonzi, Fischer Discal, Renato Scotto, um, Ivo Vinco, Fiorenza Casata. It's sort of a thinking person's a thinking person's Rigoletto, I guess. I don't know. There's something about it that's very serious and very sincere. And the singing is just is just splendid. I mean, you know, Fisher Dieskow's Rigoletto is the controversial thing. I mean, Rigoletto's not a philosopher, but okay. You know, we get there. Then we do Wagner. We have Wagner orchestral bits, um, which are fine. You know, the Liebes taught from Isolde, the prelude of Tristan and the Liebes to Isolde's dead thing, and Siegfried Idol. And the Prelude to Lohengrin and the Meistersinger Overture, which are very good. And then Lohengrin with Kublik. Now, Kublik was a fabulous Wagner conductor. He really was. I mean, the Lohengrin, this Lohengrin is a beautiful, beautiful Lohengrin. It's, it's, it's quite splendid. I mean, everyone sort of chooses Kempa 
as the one to really go for. But I like this one just as much in many, many respects. And unfortunately, they weren't here because they couldn't license them, but they came out subsequently, his Parsifal and his Meistersinger, which are amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, and we've got, oh, what a wonderful cast. Carl Ritterbush, uh, James King, Gundula Janowitz, Thomas Stewart, Gwyneth Jones um, as Ortrude who I think is the best character of the opera, and I just wish he'd shut up and won the whole thing at the end. Um, and it's 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 a wonderful Lohengrin. And then we've got Weber Overtures, wonderful disc, Oberon, Abu Hassan, Der Freischitz, Orianti, Preziosa, and Jubel, and Oberon the Opera, which was for years the only one you could get. And thank God it was a good one. And it's got, ooh, wait till you hear the cast. It's got, let's see, uh, Dialogue. I don't care about the dialogue. It has dialogue, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Donald Grossa, Marga Shimmy, Arlene Auger, Birgit Nielsen, Yulia Hamari, Placido Domingo, and Hermann Pry. It's not going to get better, even if Oberon is hopeless. Then we have interviews with Kubelik um, on Gustav Mahler. One of them is in English. A whole big, huge Megillah of one is in German. Huge with Carl Schumann about Mahler. Oh, Raumklang and stereophonie. So there's that stuff. And then Kubelik, a portrait with like talks and things like that. And there's a bit of like, oh, these are DVDs. The DVDs have Mozart 38, uh, Beethoven, Leonore number three, and Symphony number two, and Symphony number three, Bruckner four, um, and pictures and rehearsals and all, all kinds of juicy things. So if you, uh, you know, Kubelik had his moments. He could be, he could be erratic. He really could be. I, I, you know, he had some, some times, there are times there where uh, things kind of fall apart, listening to his live stuff. And his studio stuff is just the opposite. It could be a little bit over-controlled. Um, it doesn't have, I think, some of the spontaneity, especially the Mahler performances and maybe a couple of the Beethovens and a few other things um, that you found in his live stuff where that sense of danger is there. But, on the whole, on the whole, he was, of course, a fabulous musician. I was able to do, I've already we've talked about his Mercury stuff and his Orfeo stuff and other Kubelik boxes. So I was delighted to learn that this is still out there. And so if you've been hesitating and you don't have the standard stuff, if you don't have the Bartok, the Janicek, the Dvorak, the, you know, the, the Lohengrin, the, the Rigoletto, the Oberon, uh, there's, there's so much more good stuff here than not good stuff. And, and he was just a wonderful, spontaneous musician. Um, I am delighted to recommend this still available box. Get it while you can, because the only reason it's probably still available is because it didn't sell out the first time. So who knows? Maybe it will this time. If you all grab it while you can. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. How many discs was this? Let me just make it clear. 64 discs total with two DVDs. Take care.